Prophet that the believer is a mirror to the believer. And the concept of the mirror, the concept of mirroring, I urge anyone who's interested in studying about mirroring, that laser technology is based on mirrors and resonance. The ability to send a light and amplify the power of the light. Normally you send a light, it's like a flashlight doesn't do anything. How do you amplify the light to such a point where it cuts through steel? Now some that go 250 miles up into space can take things down. It's from light and the power of light and the secret of mirroring that light. They have computer technology which mirrors, I think, billions or hundreds of millions of times in a second. It takes the light and mirrors it back and forth and then it shoots it out. For us, just from the teaching of Prophet and that the believer is a mirror to the believer at many different levels, but most important for our understanding is for the path and understanding the path. That the soul and the heart is like a mirror trying to reflect out realities. As much as we cleanse and wash with zikr, with chanting, with fasting, with praying, with everything that Prophet and all the Prophets of the Divine the Presence brought for us was to purify the mirror. Because if the technology is using it, it was a teaching from us. The Divine is showing that this is your reality. And the clever ones picked it up and used it for technology. You are supposed to mirror my Divine Presence, my Heavenly Kingdom, my angelic lights. They're supposed to merely look at you and reflect out from your soul that light. Because you can't be a source of light, that's only God. Light in Allah is the only source, source of light. We are like the moon, reflections of light. The more we purify, the more we cleanse, the more we're able to reflect. Nobody can be a source of light. It means Al Khaliq, Allah is the one, the source. We are in levels of purification, purify, purify, purify to begin to reflect. For us, that we we'll learn the reality upon the horizon and within ourselves. Earth, moon, and sun are very important in the relationship of our spiritual progress. The sun being the source of light and the physicality and our earthly reality is the earth and the moon being the reality of the soul in this example. That it's trying to reflect the perfection of the sun and shine upon the earth. When we begin to study the earth is in need of these two lights. It needs the sunlight and it needs the moonlight and it can't exist without the combination. No growth, no breath, no nothing happening if no moonlight. If only sunlight, everything burns. All growth is at night with the moonlight. Means for us then the understanding of this relationship is deep because when we begin to ponder, if we don't know our spiritual path and any spiritual path, and we don't understand that when we move into the presence of people who spend their whole life purifying themselves, washing themselves, cleansing their mirror, then you move into their associations, it's like a house of mirrors. So when we understand that, then it becomes more and more clear for us. We said before that when you enter into the house of mirrors, we have to begin to know ourselves because Prophet Sassim teaching who knows himself will know his Lord through the reflection, if, if it is that we want to know ourselves, So as soon as I begin to take a path of trying to know myself, don't claim to know your Lord, but divine teaching, no, first know yourself. You don't know your name in my presence. It's not the name your parents gave you. You have seven names, seven paradises in divine presence. You should know the name of each of your names in that paradise and that name should be dressing you and blessing you. Divine saying, if you don't know yourself, each name like a ring of an atom. There are seven levels of an atom to the nucleus, to the center of power. 
The divine is teaching that if you don't know yourself, then don't claim to know me. So we are on a path to know ourselves. As we begin to take the path of knowing ourselves, we have to know that when we come across these mirrors, what is it that's reflecting? Because you ask to know yourself. In our hearts and in our prayers, and everyone prays differently, and everybody's intention may have been slightly different, it doesn't matter. That at some point we reached out and asked that, my Lord, I want to approach you. I want your satisfaction. I want to leave this and move towards you. Many different, as many different prayers as, as the breath. People are praying different prayers. All of them, the same result. The Divine says, go then and sit in the house of mirrors. The house of mirrors will tell you about yourself. If it is yourself that you want to know. Most people enter, and they enter the house of mirrors, and they think that they know all the mirrors now. And that's where we fail. We fail coming to judge and criticize and comment upon all the mirrors in the house, versus knowing ourselves. That the greatness, when we say Allahu Akbar, the greatness and the supremacy of the Divine Presence is His unique love, lovingness for just ourselves, each one uniquely Allah loving. It's so far beyond our imagination, we can't imagine God loves me that much that He has this detail for me, because the ego wants us to forget. No, no, it's, it's, it's not, can't be that detailed, no. Allah's love for me and for you and for us is so intense. He says, go into that house of mirrors and I will begin to reflect uniquely about yourself, if it is yourself that you want to know. So better to take notes and to write and to begin to analyze myself, that when I enter the house of mirrors, there's no way that I know the shape. There's impossible to know the shape. That's the big mirror. That mirror is reflecting out all of our imperfections. And those that are attending the majlis and the ceremonies of zikr, they are all also mirrors in the way. So as soon as we enter into the house of mirrors, we begin to criticize. We begin to experience all sorts of experiences. And again, it's something that we have to really contemplate and begin to understand. When you watched movies as kids and you saw Cinderella, was it Cinderella or Sleeping Beauty? Mirror, mirror on the wall, who's the prettiest of them all? Who said that? There you go, it was the witch. The witch means the bad ego that's not happy with itself, not happy with its image, not happy with what Allah has decreed for it. And always looking for something that will glorify and gratify itself but not looking for its reality, so it finds a magical mirror that lies to it all the time. And only that mirror is the one that it appreciates because of its ugliness. It looks into the mirror and says, who's the fairest one of them all? Who's the most beautiful of them all? You are, you are, and becomes the favorite of the wicked witch. But the reality is the opposite. As soon as we enter into the mirror, we should take a note that we're going to see and know ourselves. You're not going to know anybody in that room. And that's the greatness and supremacy of Allah Is that every image you look in this house of mirrors, I'm going to show you something new about yourself. So if you've been to house of mirrors, you see the fat mirror, the big mirror, the short mirror, they have all different angles of mirrors because you're looking at all these different reflections. Allah is going to show every single character in the house of mirrors. And even the mirror is going to begin to understand its character because it's also looking at another mirror. So somebody new comes in and has all of these critiques. Oh, these people are like this. When we explain that, most people don't understand what you talk about mirrors. So before, that people come and say, Shay, were you angry today? The Soba was really angry. 
say very fierce, very scary. Um, no, as a sheikh, there is no anger. There shouldn't be any anger towards people. But what you're picking up is your own anger. That's merely reflecting and you're seeing it and you're dealing with it. And that's what's so amazing and so difficult for the ego to want us to understand. So if you played mirrors when you were a kid and you start talking and the mirror is, is imitating you back. You can't believe that, no, this is a mirror, this is actually that person. So no, no. A very polished mirror will imitate everything back to you. If it's a mirror, we're not talking about a wall, we didn't, Prophet didn't describe the believer as a wall to the believer. It's a mirror, it's reflecting. It means if you sit with them and begin to gossip, they gossip back with you. It's, oh, what was that? But they didn't start the gossip. They merely engage and indulge in what you're doing because they're reflecting out the characteristics. You're angry and you start to look at them and you feel like, oh, what are they talking about? They talk about everything and it makes me angry and they're angry. I say, no, it's merely my reflection that Allah wants me to see myself. And then I interact and turn to this person and, and begin to have a difficulty with this person, then a difficulty with that person. Why this person said this? And why this person did this? Why this person touched that? Everything becomes a complaint. Everything becomes an issue. All they want is money. All they want is this. All they want is that. All they have is this. The people there are rude. The people there are this. The people there are that. And this was the house of purification. This was the reality of purification. That at every moment we should be thinking that, why am I thinking what I'm thinking? Because Allah wants that characteristic to be known. He said many times, if you don't have anger, you wouldn't be hearing anger in any of the lectures. Some people are so self-conscious, they know the lectures about them, but there's been no name mentioned. Because the conscience knows. The conscience is saying, hey, that's about us. That's about me. And it's about all of us. That's why we said at the beginning, it's always a lesson from myself. Because we're all in the mirror, we're all reflecting out. And when we go to the more powerful mirrors, they're reflecting a more powerful image out. Because each power of every mirror is going to go deeper into the characteristic going to go deeper into what Allah wants to be brought out. If you don't know the sickness is within you, you can't repent, you can't ask for forgiveness, and you can't bring it out to cut it. And you merely live with the sickness, die with the sickness, and be cleansed in the grave with that sickness. Every action Allah is going to bring to an account, and it's God's mercy to understand ourselves when we're alive. Then it gives us an understanding of understanding other people. Because as soon as you sit with someone and hear them complaining, it's quick to know you know what their sicknesses are. Because whatever they're complaining about, it's because of their sickness. Their sickness merely hits the issue and they begin to complain. Because that's the sickness. So it's like having a, a root. As soon as you touch the root, you feel the pain. As soon as we come into the house of mirrors, as soon as you hear somebody talking about an issue, the issue that they're talking about is a result of their sickness. If they didn't have that sickness, they would not be talking about it. It wouldn't be affecting them, it wouldn't be of anything on their concern. The very purified ones, they don't talk at all in the house of mirrors. They come and they absorb and they're in, engaged in that divinely light. They're merely doing their zikr, they're making their tafakkur and their contemplation and absorbing that energy. And everything else in our life and in our interaction and in our daily actions will begin to show us ourselves. So everyone that we deal with throughout the day it's a sign from Allah that why is your mirror interacting like this? Why are these relationships interacting like this? Why are your characteristics interacting like this? 
you're going to work and every day your boss is yelling at you, it's not random. Allah the best of planner, in the ocean of tawheed and oneness, you have to believe there's nothing that can come to you that Allah is not sending. So why is He sending? There must be a lesson. Why in this mirror I'm having this problem? Why is this boss bothering me and yelling at me? And Allah just says, then take a good look, that is your character. What that person is doing and, and, and whatever characteristic that person is putting towards you is actually a reflection of your own character. If you believe in Allah and you believe in His greatness, then Allah just says, not even the mustard seed under a rock is not known to me. I know it's zikr, I know it's existence, I know it's purpose. And you, وَلَكَ الْكَرَمَ بَنِي adam that I have made and, and made honorable in my Divinely Presence, I'm not testing you, I'm not trying you, I'm not sending things to you that you wanted to know yourself. Now merely walk and you'll begin to know every interaction that comes to you. Why is this person doing this like this to me? Because it's you. If that characteristic didn't exist within you, it would have reflected off. Allah won't send what you don't need to know. It's not something wasted. It's not something random. It must be very precise. There must be a, an understanding and a reality in every interaction if we're on the path of realization. If you're not on the path of realization, then you don't realize anything anyways. It's, it's, not, it's not even in the formula. Greatness of Allah so just, you want to know yourself? You're going to know me. So now begin to know yourself. Everywhere you go, monitor every reaction and interaction we're having. And why is it like that? Is it of the caliber of prophetic reality? Is it of a saintly interaction? Is it of a good and clean and purified interaction, then that is a purified mirror. If it is of a very low nature, filled with bad characteristics, bad interaction, all sorts of bad characteristics that Allah is not pleased with, Prophet not pleased with, then Allah is drawing our attention that clean that in your mirror. Don't accept it. Don't, don't accept to have that flaw. So somebody comes and says, Shaykh, I'm very angry and I've agreed to live with it. Then you're wasting the time of the Shaykh and wasting the time of the tariqah. Take a back seat because they won't put any nazar onto you. If you're not willing to lift yourself, fix yourself, uplift yourself, then you're a waste of time. Sit in the back, they'll catch you in the grave. In the grave you're not going anywhere and it's going to be 70,000 times more difficult. But those that are coming on a path of realization, or maybe they didn't sign up for it, it doesn't matter now you're being told. It is a path of realization. Everywhere I go, what's happening? And begin to write it and journal it. The boss yells, this, 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 this. Every interaction say, no, this is for business. No, you're wrong. There is no business in Allah's eyes. It's just for Allah This is for this, this is for that. No, no, no. For Allah He makes no distinction. He doesn't care for dunya. Every interaction we have, it's based on Allah wanting to show my characteristic. I cannot be bad to people for work and then pretend to be spiritual on spiritual times. Every characteristic must be the same. I must be good at all times. I must be purified at all times. I must uphold myself as if Allah is with me and He is, and Prophet with me and He is and only Allah are with me and they are, and they don't feel ashamed of me, and they don't feel ashamed of my characteristic, and they don't feel ashamed of how I'm representing that reality. We are ambassadors for their reality. That is the individual seeker who's going out and begins to understand that everybody is now coming as a sign from my characteristic. But to clarify, when you're in the presence of the teachers and the shaykhs, 
They are the big mirrors. The characteristics that you've been able to point out, those are good. But in the mirror, it will begin to go deeper into the characteristic. Like a surgery. And they'll be able to point out very specific characteristics. And everything begins to show. We said before, you come and they begin to tell you to be generous. And you say, no. Why do you have to be generous? Because you're cheap. If you're cheap, how are you going to meet Allah cheap? How are you going to be asking Allah for something if in our lives our hand is like this? If your hand is like this, what's going to come into it if nothing can leave it? It's then the worst of characteristics. But if you're always generous, always loving, always giving, as much as you give, Allah will give you ten times, seven hundred times more. And if you come and you're angry, then what's the purpose of coming to chanting anger and understanding the characteristics to be angry? And people come and say, no, I'm not going to eat this food, I'm not going to drink this stuff. This is all from the ego. These are all from the characteristics. The why? Some people say, no, I have to have a very specific meal, very specific diet. Do you know that most people are dying for just water? Now they said in Pakistan there are areas and regions that they have no water. And they're plagued by drought and all over the world now. People have no food. They say in Moldova there are children who eat from the trash can if they can find anything. They go to areas where maybe animals and birds have died and they pick at it from dead carcasses. How we can sit in front of Allah and say, no, we, we, we pick certain types of food that we can eat, if it's organic or not. If it's not organic, Shaykh, I can't eat it. If the eggs aren't special, if the water is not special. It's all lies. It's all from the bad characteristics showing itself. Then why does that happen when I go there? Those are the characteristics that Allah wants to bring out. Why to be angry, why to be stingy, why to be so critical, why to backbite and talk about everyone, but never talk about yourself and your own bad characteristics. We only see all the other people's faults, but never our own faults. So understanding the mirror and understanding the relationship is the first step in tariqah. Because once we start to write down that, oh my God, these are all my characteristics. And next time I go there, I know something's going to happen. Somebody's going to say something. And then I've got to monitor myself, why am I getting angry and frustrated when this person is saying this? Because it's within me. And all of wants that sick, sickness to be known. If you're a very controlling person, you can't stand somebody else exhibiting any type of control. It makes you go crazy because you're controlling. It means every characteristic is going to be reflected out to us.